All right, man, I'm back. It's your boy, Amon Corleone. Learn as you grow podcast. And, uh... I had to throw the shades on and really uh, prepare myself for this. sometimes, man, you feel me, so it's like, August 18th, once again, when my sister died, um, it tore my life apart, because, um, you, you just had to remember, um, right after that was, First, it was my nephew Justin's birthday. My sister's son, he turned 16 two days after his mom died, right? The day after that was my dad's birthday, right? Three days after she passed, August 21st is my dad's birthday. Her birthday, August 31st. My mom's birthday, September 8th, and her serv- my sister's funeral and the service and all that was on the night, the day after my mom's birthday. So that was a rough month. But to add on to that, my Uncle Robbie, um, neighborhood legend, um, Grace Ferry legend, South Philly legend, Hollywood and Wharton legend, um, Trueno passed away. Um, the day of my sister's service, my Uncle Robbie actually came to my house and, um, and came with hospice and um, he spent the last three days. He came on, on a Friday, that was the day of my sister's service. And um, on Monday, he had, he had passed at about 4.44 in the morning. Yeah. Um, it's crazy because I was in the I was in the back in the studio, and you know he had his bed and all set up in the living room with a big TV yeah, and all, yeah, and all whatever. So um, plus his, his sons were staying over too, so, so they were sitting on the couches and all that. But anyway, so I come down to smoke a cigarette on the porch, so something just wasn't right, and um. Uh, it just, just wasn't right. And um, unfortunately, uh, even he met, understand how he met his um, he met his demise, man. And uh, that's why that's why I be trying to tell people all the time, man. It's no joke. Um and he died from liquor. He didn't die from no Fentanyl or none of that. He died from drinking too much liquor. People think that liquor is safe. People think because it's legal that it's safe. But uh, me and myself, I'm a I'm a high advocate for um, for marijuana um, and. I feel like that because um, I seen what alcohol did first firsthand to my family. Um, my dad's three brothers, right? My uncle Joseph, my godfather, um, and the two twins, 
my Uncle Richie and my Uncle Robin all passed away from liver liver damage from drinking too much. And um it's sad, man. Like all my people died from drugs, alcohol, um, getting shot, something like that, something crazy. Um, I pay my man Jules. I pay Bobby. Man. And uh, there's a lot of people that, that survived this life, man. And I'm one of them. So far, I survived 36 years. But when my sister died, man, I couldn't deal with anything. I'm still in a depression. It took a lot for me to get up just to come here and, and, and do my job today. And do this. Because, um... It's like, damn, the motivation is gone. Like, damn, sis, and then my uncle, back to back. Um, it's just too much, man. And it's the drugs and alcohol that's doing it, and it's making me feel like, I don't know, man. It's making me feel like it's, it's some type of fucking setup or something, man. Just like I'm seeing all this black on black. Um, violence going on, and usually I don't even speak on um, other racist issues, but it just needs to be spoken on, man. Um, all these killings, man, because I'm hip hop, I'm hip hop to death. Don't ever get that misconstrued. Um, I play work for hip hop, um, I'm, I'm, I'm hip hop to the death. Don't ever get that misconstrued. So when it's, when it's dealing with hip hop and it's dealing with the generation that's going on right now, it's dealing with me. Um, like I said, my nephew just turned 16, man. And uh, he's learning who he is at this point in, in life. And uh, he's a thorough young boy, that's what he is. But I know, cause I've been in his shoes he already got further than I got. I mean, I'm ninth grade dropout. I mean, really eighth grade dropout because I never even finished a semester in ninth grade. Um, so, all right, so I want to get back to what I was saying about um, the depression and, and all that. And um, So when my sister passed, I'm in the middle of running a business. Now I got to still make beats. I have to still um, upload. I still got to do my graphic design. Like this, it don't stop. Just because, you know, somebody goes. And um, it hurt to realize that. And um, so I was fortunate enough to be in a position where I could take a little break and um, get my mind straight because that month was crazy. Like, my nephew's birthday, my dad's birthday, and back to back. And it's like, and I knew 2021 was going to be a, a, a different kind of year, man. So many great things happen and uh, bad things happen. And, um, Worst things happen to me, and the best things happen to me, all in the, in the same year and a half span. That's the crazy part. The best thing that ever happened to me in life um, happened, and then right after that, the worst thing. Um, when you lose a sibling. My sister was, she taught me the game. Now that she's not here, I can speak on it. When I was seven, eight years old, um, you know, this was, nah, 
I had to be like nine. Yeah, I was about nine or ten. And because um, I remember Wu Tang had just came out and uh, they didn't even drop forever yet. And I remember um, they always used to talk about smoking wolves and, you know, stuff like that. And that was cool to them. I mean, back then, uh, for those that don't know, a wool, wooly is, um, is rock, crack mixed in with weed. And, you know, you smoke a blunt of that. Um, not my style. Um, but I was 10 years old going with them to go first because my sister had to babysit me. You know, my mom was working and my dad, he lived in Philly. My mom, she went to Jersey to get, get right, to get off what um, she was on. And um, I thank her for that. I love her for that. Um, I admire her for that. And, uh, but anyway, yeah, she, we went to my aunt's house in Jersey. And when you're with your family, um, and we had to stay, we didn't have to, but we stayed in a one room, like in my aunt's basement, like um, one bathroom in a room. That's what it was. And uh, one TV over there, my mom's bed right here, and two bunk beds right here. That's it. <clears throat> and I lived like that from like five to about 12, 13. So being around my sister and being that close and um, watching everything taught me the game early. Um, I remember going to North Philly and, and going to the block, and this is when you still pulled up to the to the you know what I mean to the middle of the block, and they, they serve you right from the car. And um, this is when they still did that, and it's just like being so young. I remember them saying, "Yo, don't bring him back here no more. Like he's too young." We can't serve you. We keep bringing him back here. And um, that was just crazy to me. That, um, <laughs> like, they act like they care that much. But anyway, so my sister developed a habit for the, for the Woolies. And um, she had a boyfriend. He had a, he had a Mazda and a uh, nice job. And, you know, I always got the new CDs. And, um, you know, I would bring him in his car. And then it's the same thing. He, he would young boy me for him. So um, <laughs> I wound up, um, let's not get into that. But, yeah, I grew up in that lifestyle. Um, seeing... My sister then stopped. She stopped all that. And um, she got with another dude. And this dude sold um, all, the, all the tree. He had the gas. And um, once again, I'm in there watching all this. I'm watching the, the whole hustle and bustle of the, of the grind. And, um, Shout out to my man Monahan, my mom, yeah, yeah, my mom. But anyway, um, so I seen the game real early, um, and we would go to Philly on the weekends, and like on Wednesdays when my mom had off, right after school we would go because her her husband, um. Still lived on 28th and Tasky, South Philly. So we would come to Philly and um, we would stay from Friday to um, Sunday night. And then we would, I would come on Wednesday. So anyway, long story short, my sister would throw house parties, craziest 29th 
Wharton, Hollywood and Wharton, 30th in Tasca, 26th in, in Mars. Everybody was coming through. I'm like, everybody that was somebody would come through the party. And um, they would have kegs in the backyard. Um, my man Harry, my OG, um, he used to, he used to, um, you know, he used to live a couple doors from me. And he's probably about six, seven years older than me. But um, he's one of them dudes who I was watching. I had my eyes on him because he was getting things. He was he was always had nice nice things. He was always thorough, um, always thorough. And um, he was the type of dude that you know. I'll be on the, this was, I was young when I started hustling. Cause um, like I would see uh, my sister's boyfriend's hustling and I would literally do the same shit with candy and stuff like, and bring it to school. And like, I know a lot of people say that shit before, but like I really, really was like bagging up candy and shit. Like, um, I forgot, I mixed, Drink shit, like all types of shit. I remember um, pencils was a thing for a minute. I would get a different color, you know. Uh, everybody wanted their football team, so it was hard to get every football team. But like I said, I would go to Philly and I'd grab some stuff. And then that led to me being 12 years old um, and getting into the, to the, um, to the marijuana industry. And um, this was about 1997, 98. And um, so I got into the marijuana industry. So, all right. So, um, yeah, it's, it's a good group of people here today. Um, so when I got into the marijuana industry, I took, this was 1997, I would take dimes. From Philly, 27th and Dickerson. Shout out to um, OG Mint. I don't know where the fuck he's at. I ain't seen him in 20 years. But uh, shout out to him. Um, and <laughs> take him to Jerry's and, and, and double up. Double up real quick. But um, I developed a, a real strong habit from smoking marijuana, like, it was something different, like, you know, people smoke, but I smoke different. Um, I was going all out, I would have an Altoid uh, <laughs> thing filled up with all J's back in the day, because I couldn't roll, I couldn't roll no blunt, and um, <laughs> I used to double wrap the J's in the paper and shit, it was showing you paper and motherfucker. Plus the weed back in the day, you know, that shit, that shit wasn't right. And um, that shit wasn't even fair. But um, <laughs> uh, shit. So I got in the game though. And um, that led me to being on the block in Philly because Jersey School just wasn't having me um, at all. And I'm gonna get more into that on part two of the um, uh, my first interaction with the police. And um, part one is out now. You can check that out. The video. We're gonna have a video for part two, but not part one. Anyway, so I'll be on 29th, 29th and Reed outside the bar, you know. Wasn't no cell phones like that back then. Like, you had to be out on the block or be seen. Or I would have my house phone. I would have my cordless phone be on the block. Um, it wouldn't ring when I went all the way to the corner. It would ring probably like three, four houses from the corner. So um, I would be out there selling my tray. Then Harry. Will always pull up in something. My OG. And um, 
He always scoop it. Come on, young. Take a ride. And just that love that he showed me, like, because he would always have something crazy, some 15 speakers in the car, you know what I mean? Like, he was always in the, um, in the, in the car stereos and just fly shit, fly cars. And, um, Vicious going to 60 seconds, boy, like, Vicious. But, um, so he had picked me up and, um, he, he, he schooled me to so much, man. And um, I thank him for that. Like, it's OGs in my hood that, that schooled me to shit that I never forget. You know what I mean? And it's also OGs that are just, you know, schooled me in a way that I just watch how they move. You feel me? And me watching how they move made me develop. Um, bad habits and good habits. Um, a lot, a lot of the bad habits um, came later on, um, cause like I said, I started really young. So Harry would pick me up. We'd drive around Southwest, and he would play my tape, and that feeling that it gave me driving around Center City and, and the whole city, um, knocking my shit, 60 minutes of heat. That's what I, that's what was my mixtape was called, literally a mixtape cassette. Um, it was 60 minutes and I just rocked for 60 minutes on other people's instrumentals. I had an Alchemist vs. Havoc instrumental um, album. And I had, we had, what else I had? The, um, all the instrumentals from the Chronic 2001. Um, had, I had some, some instrumentals back then, but it wasn't like it is now. Like, you wasn't getting no original beats and all that. Like, that was a, nah, negatron. So, we would ride around, and that gave me that feeling that, like, yo, I could do this rap shit. I could really, really do this rap shit. So, I get booked. I sold and robbed him. I was 15. Um, two of my homies got away. And uh, the cop came into me on the white chase from 15th and Jackson all the way to 23rd and Mars. And uh, they got me in the joints when they went right in front of the bike and I would've kept going, I was gonna do a header and I had that whoosh, fell in the hood and shit, they gripped me all up, whatever. Um, you know me, you know, who was the other dudes? No name, no blame, I ain't trying to talk. I was young at that point too, but I knew the game inside and out. And um, that's when I knew, started to realize things were different. Um, I got locked up for the assault and robbery. And um, when, I, when I got out, I got ROR, you know, I, you know, I was 15, my, my parents, my pop came and got me. So, um, I, I got a lawyer on the case. Shout out to Joe Capone. And um, that's when I knew that money mattered because the day of court, we go in with the lawyer and he had talked to the judge beforehand. And as soon as the case got called, it was, the cop went up on the stand and she lied on me, saying she seen me rob dude and all this shit. And it was just a lie. The cop just straight lied on me. And I'm like, why? It was a female cop, African American female cop. And I was just like, why? Like, why 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 do you wanna see me locked up? I'm a child. Like, why? I'm on, I'm not like the people 
didn't even show up to court. Like, and you're here. So the judge, you know, um, was like, oh, so they were all out there at three in the morning fighting like cowboys and Indians and all, you know. And he was like, case dismissed. And uh, i never forget Joe Capone, my lawyer at the time, wanted me to shake hands with the cop. Afterwards, we were all outside the courtroom. What do you think I did? What would you have done? What would you have done? Ask me that. What would you have done? Would you, uh, kept going? Or would you, uh, would you have shook her hand? And audio got a little bit crazy there, but I'm gonna have to fix that. Um, so I wasn't shaking her hand. I refused. Uh, kind of made a little bit of a scene outside the courtroom because when I refused, he was like, let's go ahead. And I was just, he was right there, and I was just like, nah. Like, she just lied. Like, nah. And um, I don't know why he wanted me to shake her hand so bad. I guess he wanted to have a connect. And um, you know, the more that's what I realized afterwards. Now that like the more connections you have, the better. Whether it's with police, whoever, um, because you can't judge. Um, that's like judging a whole race for what one person does. Or if, like, a lot of people's on some bullshit, you can't say every police officer's on some bullshit. I know some good cops. I know some bad cops. But I know that four people got treated different when I came home that day from court. I beat the case. Um, called up one of my mans who, when we did the robbery, what they got, they sold and when I came home, um, you know, they had some bread for me. A little couple of hours, 30 hours, something like that. A little, little weed money. So, um, I thought that was some thorough shit. Like, dang, they, they, has, they got some bread for me and all. Like, damn, it's some thorough shit. And um, years later, come to find out. They ain't had no bread for me. They actually skimmed off the top and they really got bread for them. And, you know, they gave me some uh, just in case he finds out type shit. You feel me? So I'm like, years later, I realized, like, dang, I took that whole case for them. I'll never be a rat, you know what I mean? I can never do that. But, if somebody's taking a case and they they didn't rat on me, like, and I get some bread, like, it was, it was they stole a bike. We stole a bike, and um, they got away with the bike, and they sold it. And uh, they got a certain price for it, like 200 or something, it gave me like 30 out. Whatever, between three people, whatever. That's when I realized, like, because these was my homies, like, these people that I call my brothers. That's when I realized the game ain't always cracked up to be. And this was before, like, this was just smoking weed days. Like, this was it's crazy. Young boy days. So, um, anyway, the day I beat the case, I catch another charge on Stanley Street, Stanley and Tesco, um, to celebrate. You know, I had to go grab some weed, and um, <laughs> they had to block on surveillance and caught me and the, one of the boys that I took the case for. They caught us up in the whole thing because we was there buying the tree. So um, 
they had to take us in. So, because they got the buyer, they got to get the customers, you know what I mean? So, like, they had to, that's what they do. If anybody knows, like, when they uh, arrest somebody for selling drugs, it's, a, it's just a better case when they got the customers. So, not even that the customers would sell or anything, it's just that the customers got caught with the stuff on their person. So, it makes for a better case. So anyway, um, so if, you know, they grab the customers, don't think that like, oh, they right, they right, or oh, don't assume that, all this, you know what I mean? Because that's just not what it is. So anyway, they take me and my man, and uh, long story short, my sister came, because my pop was so, he was just, he was done. Cause you know, I just just beat a case like a couple of hours before. And uh so my sister came and she was like twenty three at the time. And I'm just thinking back when I was twenty three, um I, that's when I just came home from my first real prison bid in the state of New Jersey. Um I don't know why most of my charges I catch when I go over the bridge. And, and um, so 